Hey everyone, welcome back to All Car News. And you join me here today with the ground up new 2025 Subaru Forester. And when I mean ground up new, it really is an all new vehicle. We have an all new design inside and out, as well as all new technology features. The chassis is stiffer, but also offering more plush and comfortable ride. And of course you have more interior space for both passengers and your cargo to haul everything around with that safe, symmetrical all-wheel drive system, Subaru's integrated safety systems into the chassis, as well as an all new next generation of EyeSight. But even with all of these new updates for 2025, is this new Subaru Forester super competitive enough to really battle out the high-tech, high-performing vehicles now in this very crowded SUV space? We're gonna go explore that today in this video. And I'm gonna show you why this Forester is still that really fantastic, reliable, long-term buying option for you if you're looking for a big, nice family SUV that's not gonna break the bank. Let's go dive in. Now, what's under the hood of this 2025 Subaru Forester? Well, while this may be an all new vehicle, it's mostly it's not essentially all new in terms of its powertrains. If you're familiar with Subaru and their lineup, they like to keep things old school in the sense of their powertrains. This is the very, very familiar two and a half liter flat four cylinder engine we have seen in the previous Forester, as well as in a whole bunch of other Subaru models as well. And it's still making that same around 180-ish horsepower figure paired to an updated version of their linear Tronic CVT transmission. Of course, sending power to all four wheels at all times with their symmetrical all-wheel drive system as well. And, you know, I would have liked to seen something else. I would have really liked Subaru to reintroduce the turbocharged option back to the Forester lineup. A lot of its competitors offer a huge amount of different engine options and the Forester is just lacking a little bit in this segment. Now we do have a hybrid version coming later down the road. Subaru did confirm that. So that will be coming to the US market later on, but that will likely use a Toyota derived hybrid system um, paired to one of the Subaru's boxer engines, but we don't really have any information on that just of yet. Yet this powertrain still can be generally quite efficient. On the highway, we're gonna see numbers around 32 MPG, which is the EPA rating. So it's not too bad though. If you do want to tow with your Subaru Forester, that 1500 pound um, tow rating really isn't that high. You're gonna to wanna to look elsewhere. Otherwise, this is a pretty safe and reliable engine and powertrain option that you're gonna be getting in the 2025 Forester. That's definitely something you're gonna to wanna to consider if you're really thinking about keeping this vehicle extra, extra long-term, which a lot of Subaru owners and specifically Subaru Forester owners do. They typically hold onto the vehicles for almost around 10 years, which is really high in this new industry, in the industry which is constantly coming out with new um, updated technology and vehicles. Subaru owners like to hold on to their um, trusty Japanese SUVs. Now, of course, since this is an all new Forester, we are getting that all new design as well as all new wheels and new colors. This is Subaru's new River Rock Pearl paint shade that is kind of going on along with that really big industry trend of these kind of muted gray colors. This is Subaru's now take on it. And this in this touring trim, at around $40,000, we are getting a lot of gloss black accents around the exterior of the 2025 Forester. There's also a sport trim, which is kind of adding these new bronze accents around here as well, but this is a little bit more of an understated look um, versus those trims. And of course, there are lower trims with less gloss black and a little bit more of a um, even more understated look, I would go to say. Up front here, we have this really new, bold hexagonal grill from Subaru. Um, some have kind of akin to a little bit of an older Ford Explorer, which I, if you kind of squint a little bit and walk away, you can kind of see that. But I think it's a very just clean overall look for the Forester. Um, over here on our headlight front here, we have full LED headlights with these really nice LED um, daytime running light signatures, which I actually quite like a lot more in person than I saw originally in those pictures as well as um, we have our full LED beams down here, which do adjust themselves um, to the right settings. I think overall, nice design here. We have a flush Subaru badge here, as well as a front camera as well, which is gonna be part of a newer system that we're gonna see on the interior of this 2025 Forester. Coming over to the side on the wheel front here, we have these really nice 19 inch wheels on this Touring trim with this very nice complicated um, aluminum pattern here. And of course, depending on the Forester trim you go for, you'll have a whole bunch of different wheel options as well. They've also kind of introduced some other technology that were earlier introduced on the Subaru WRX, such as this passive aero vent over here to help um, have air pass over the wheel arch to help further improve fuel efficiency. But they seem to have foregone that sort of golf ball-like texture we see overside on this plastic trim that Subaru originally said was helped to um, improve aerodynamics, but I'm not too sure why they didn't include it here on the new Forester. Coming over to the rear and side of the all-new 2025 Forester, on the design front, I think Subaru is doing a good job of kind of keeping this in that old Forester sort of 
crossover wagon-esque design here. We have a really um, long and low wide body with a little bit of some muscular accentuations on the side here. But one of my favorite features actually is this symmetrical all-wheel drive badge we have right here on the C-pillar to tie the whole thing together. This harks back all the way back to one of the earlier Subaru Foresters that we actually used to have in back in 2003 that had that all-wheel drive badge right over here. I think this is a nice little touch. I think it adds to the overall Forester ethos. The overall rear design is a little bit interesting, a little bit bland. We do have, though, the Subaru Forester logo kind of now imprinted into the actual trunk itself. So you're always gonna see Forester here. On, then we also have a blacked out Subaru badge over here, as well as our touring badge for the specific touring trim. Overall, I think it's a nice boxy low design here. We have a lot of nice tall glass all around you for really nice visibility. And we may not have a real true light bar back here, but we do get a combination LED incandescent light back here with this black bar going through the center here to kind of mimic that sort of light bar style design. Now, how is rear cargo space in the back of the 2025 Subaru Forester? Well, we also have a new hands-free lift gate. Well, I say new, I say new to Subaru because this has been a feature that's been around for a long time in a lot of cars, but they have finally introduced a sort of foot style hands-free tailgate and a power option on this 2025 Subaru Forester. And it opens up to a truly massive amount of rear cargo space. With those second row seats folded down, you can get around 69 cubic feet of cargo storage and that's quite a nice amount of storage and it also really benefits here that this is a nice big boxy shape so if you have a lot of big items that you need to shove in here really easily this is going to be a great car for that option as well as this really low um, loading floor as well to kind of move things in i don't see that being too big of an issue for a lot of people and subaru has decked out their rear cargo areas with a whole bunch of easter eggs for their latest generation of models we have this really cool mountain motif over here on the scuff plate even up here we had this really cool subaru badge as well as a compass and a subaru star and you can find little subaru stars and these really cool topographic designs throughout the entirety of the forester's interior now to really liven things up as well also back here we have a nice a whole bunch of tie down points as well as a privacy cover here on this touring model but i think this is definitely an option on a whole bunch of the different other forester trims as well and since this does have the Harman Kardon audio system. We have a, a large speaker back here as part of that audio package as well. Overall, I think this is a pretty nice trunk space. Lots of storage capabilities in here and Subaru sends, sells an endless amount of accessories for both your pets and cargo to kind of accessorize the back of your trunk to however you want it to be. Getting inside of the rear of the Subaru Forester is also a pretty easy job as well. I really like how wide these doors open, but first we do have a keyless access over here, not located on all four doors, just on the front too. Opening up this rear door, it opens up to a really and generally truly huge amount of rear seat room and space. And I really like how these doors open almost to that 90 degree angle for nice, easy access to get in there. And their doors go all the way down to the end of the vehicle. So when you get out of the vehicle, if there's any mud or anything, it stays on the outside of the door, not on the inside and doesn't get on your pant legs. Over here on the door panel itself, since this is the touring trim, we have these kind of micro suede style inserts here with this contrasting trim, which I think generally looks quite nice. But you know, I think this still is a little bit of a not the best styled door panel it's definitely styled more for functionality than more of design though we again we have those really cool easter eggs over here a little bit of some paw prints and nice big cup holders over here to access as well hopping inside is pretty easy just move some of our camera equipment out of the way and you can see i have plenty of seat room leg room behind my seating position and i'm six feet tall and honestly i could even move a little bit more forward and, and this rear passenger would have so much rear legroom. And I like how Subaru has included storage pockets on the backs of both the driver and passenger's seats, which is a nice touch. And since this is the touring trim, we get heated rear seats as well as a USB-C port and a USB-A port in the back of the Subaru Forester, which is honestly a quite a nice touch. But how are the seats themselves? Well, they also feature this nice micro suede style insert on here. And you can also get a lighter um, tan brown trim as well if you don't like this black. Nice perforated leather. And they, thankfully, Subaru has included these absolutely huge rear seat backs back here with those nice um, perforated leather as well as these nice micro suede inserts as well. Very comfortable seats, lots of support over here. We also have a center console that folds down to reveal two cup holders here with this nice gloss black design as well. And if you can notice right now, these seats are actually reclined back. So they do recline and that will be located right over here for you. So you can pop this up and the seats 
both move up and down for you, but this is also how you can fold them down as well. So lots of nice storage capabilities here. I think this is the real way you can recline the seats. And yes, it is. So lots of reclining adjustment, as you can see here. But if you want to fold the seats completely down from this angle, you can just pop this up and the seat will fall forward and it locks right back into place for you really easily like that. This one also has an LED interior lighting upgrade, which looks quite nice. And Subaru Forester has always had an absolutely massive um, panoramic kind of moonroof here. And this is no exception here. It's absolutely huge. And Subaru has included this nice little bird Easter egg there to kind of keep you um, looking around while you are in the road on a road trip. And I also like how the rear passengers kind of sit a little bit higher than the front driver and front passenger. You can kind of see you have a little bit more of a commanding view around you. And closing up the doors, nice solid thunk in here as well. Um, part of this new stiffer um, chassis that Subaru has um, developed for the 2020. 25 Forester. Let's go see what's going on on the front end now because there are some big changes here for Forester owners. Now hopping into the front of the all-new Forester, again pretty easy, and the doors themselves also open up pretty wide as well. Now on these door panels up here, you can see, again, we have those really cool nice Easter egg style treatments down here with some footprints and some more um, mountain style designs as well as those micro suede inserts and this contrasting stitching over here seats themselves are also quite okay i would say i would like a little bit more adjustment we do have power on these particular ones with power lumbar as well which is a nice touch again you can see that contrasting stitching as well as those micro suede inserts i wouldn't say they're the most comfortable seats though in the segment hopping inside again very easy to get in and out of we have some nice touring branded floor mats as well let's close up our door Nice solid funk there. And well, if you've been in pretty much any Subaru in the past four-ish years, we've kind of seen these screens and this whole layout before, but let's power it on and see what's new for the Forester itself. So as you can see here, it starts up pretty quickly. You can see the headlights did a little bit of a dance while turning on. They're adjusting to their proper position there. And well, this area was a little bit of a disappointment to me when this launched um, earlier this year. And mainly because the competition has so much more high-tech features, especially like these nice digitals, the sc screens, a little bit more premium materials in the interior, especially for around this $41,000 price point for a fully loaded, um, essentially Subaru Forester. Though, what are we getting in here? Well, we've seen this steering wheel before in many Subaru models. This one does get this nice contrasting bronze um, style stitching in here, matching with the rest of the interior. And this is the same basic steering wheel we've seen on the right hand side. We have all of our Subaru eyesight controls here to activate our driver assistance systems, as well as our steering assist, the following and distance control. And since this is a not the sport model, we don't get a sport sharp mode, but we do get a sport and intelligent um, kind of drive programming as well that will pop up in your small um, center display over here in front of you. Over on our left hand side, all of our controls here for our radio and stereo systems. And we can also cycle through um, a few tiny little gauges here in our center display play here and I keep saying tiny because I think this might be one of the smallest screens we have in the entire segment right now. Um, there's just so much information here, especially when you turn on um, eyesight. It just becomes a little bit cluttered to kind of find things sometimes. I really wish Subaru would either implement a full digital cl cluster or just fill up this whole space here like Mazda does. And I think and have a nice blend between analog and digital could even be a nice um, option as well. But hopefully we'll see an update with this um, down the road. We do thankfully have automatic um, high beams as well and automatic lights with our fog light control as well for LED, which are LEDs. We also have automatic um, wipers as well. So that's a nice, nice feature in here. And generally design wise, it is definitely fresher and newer from the previous generation Forester. But if you've been in any Outback or Impreza even or WRX, this is the pretty much the same interior that we've been seeing across the Subaru lineup here. We have very nice clean vent design over here. Same thing going with our center air vents over here and that vertical layout. And this is pretty much the only unique piece I think to this Forester's interior is this design over here, this textured pattern over here with that contrasting bronze stitching and it looks like some kind of faux wood design over here um i don't know how much i feel about it we also have a glove box over here which does not appear to be lockable i don't see a key over there though correct me if i'm wrong on that one if there is a way to lock that um otherwise this screen here we've been seeing also in quite a lot of supers now this is their new kind of corporate design for their infotainment screen over here and well I think I've kind of expressed how I felt about this screen a lot in the past. It's 
just not the best screen on the planet here. We do thankfully have wireless CarPlay, Android Auto, all those other phone projection systems, but it's just a little bit laggy, a little bit not super responsive, and the graphics just look a little bit last generation to me for a 2025 brand new vehicle. I really hope this also gets improved um, when Subaru aims to update things. And I'm not too big of a fan of having all these climate controls baked into this infotainment system here. Some screens, it works pretty fine. It's quick and responsive, but even in this week of testing, I've been having some lagging issues just turning on the system on and off. It didn't want to turn off one time. I've been pressing it and uh, I'm not too sure about that. Thankfully, we do actually have ventilated seats on this touring model as well as heated seats for both the front um, driver and passenger, which is a nice touch. And opening up this menu here will open up a larger climate screen for you as well if you kind of want to dial in all of your um, information there. We do have these some physical controls here if you want to change your temperature as well as for your front defogger and ready frost. Um, I do like how these um, physical volume buttons as well as your tuning knobs are also illuminated. That's also quite a nice touch as well. And we have this multifunction display up top here to kind of cycle through a few different um, screens here but again nothing too crazy we do have our x modes as also baked into this infotainment screen as well as the option through snow dirt normal deep snow and mud and this is going to kind of reprogram the symmetrical all-wheel drive system and you also get a nice little graphic up here when you do change on um, those x modes as well um, like i said before we have a whole bunch of different vehicle settings in here from um, to kind of adjust our driving system settings way more settings as well so you can spend quite a lot of time um customizing your subaru you also do have driver profiles as well and the thing about subaru is every once in a while they'll kind of bake in some really advanced features and not really highlight them too much so for example here is they have this whole kind of infrared camera system hidden in here you can probably see it on camera here with this light and this is actually staring at the driver's face and what it's also it's doing is not only making sure that you're paying attention to the road it'll give you a warning if you're not looking at the road it can also be used for driver profiles as well so getting in and out of the car you can kind of switch driver profiles by it just recognizing your face so that's pretty cool they've actually had that around for quite some time now so and Subaru does some weird things where they kind of bake in these really cool technologies, but uh, they just don't update everything else at the same time. Like, there's some nice simple controls over here for our window switches, but no power folding mirrors. And that would be something nice to see on this um, top trim $41,000 touring model as well. But they are heated, which is a nice touch. We do finally have a digital rear view mirror option here on the Subaru Forest. And I actually really like how this one is implemented in here. It's very sleek. It doesn't go fully edge to edge, but I think it's a nice, um, clean implementation. And if you do notice right here, here is that the eyesight modules are really slim this time around previously they were so big if you got like this upgraded um, mirror here they barely could even move it and adjust it they kind of took up a lot of space but they've been able to slim and trim this down um really neatly and the packaging is well um done on this front i would say and there's also a new little um led indicator over here so when you are driving with eyesight on it will give you this little green indicator up there to let you know that the systems are working properly you're in your lanes and it will beep at you if you kind of drive out of a lane and stuff like that so that's a really nice touch there down in the center console area over here we do have a wireless charging mat though there's no sort of real grip area here, over here so if you have a loose phone or something your phone might slide around and stop charging so i honestly just leave it off and you can just use these um USB-C, USB-A ports to charge um, your mobile devices. And you also have an aux port as well. No CD player and as well at all. It's pretty much going away in all modern cars. Uh, but Subaru was keeping it around for quite some long extra time. Um, very simple stuff going on over here. We have our shifter surrounded by this gloss black material. And thankfully, they didn't put too much gloss black on this interior, which is a nice touch. Nice big cup holders over here. We have an electronic parking brake, a 12 volt socket, as well as this um, padded center armrest over here and a nice deep center console area, which is a nice touch. And this is a fun new button here. This is our view switch. So when you press it while parked, it's gonna give you a 360 degree view, panoramic um, view around the car. But when you pop it into drive, you get to unlock a whole bunch of different camera angles. And I'm not too sure why you can only access this while in drive. You can see your front two tires. You can see a front panoramic view. Um, I'd like to see this while parked as well, Subaru. So hopefully they can check and change that going down the road. But as of right now, it seems like I can only access it while the vehicle is in drive, which doesn't seem like the safest thing as well. I kind of want to have to, I want to use those um, camera angles 
whenever I want to. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it with this interior. You know, like I mentioned, the seats themselves, generally comfortable, you know, not super, super supportive. I would like a little bit more bolstering options as well. Um, I think up here is quite nice, but down here it gets a little bit flat, a little bit more thigh support would also be a nice function. Um, we also have no power um, sunshade up here for our large moonroof. So that would be a nice thing to see down the road as well. Um, we do have a nice sunglass storage cubby up here, our Subaru SOS systems. And again, nice LED lights in here are quite bright. And thankfully, Subaru has included an absolutely massive side sun deflector because with the amount of large glass in this vehicle um, which is great for visibility um, when the sun is shining it definitely will get into your face so these things are definitely useful um, when there are sunny conditions but let's go take this thing out on a drive and see how this 2025 Forester is out on the road So let's head off on our drive and see how this new 2025 Subaru, w, Subaru Forester is. And one new feature that I do like on the Forester on this touring trim is this new camera option here. So you have a view button right here in the lower center console area, and it brings up a 360 degree view camera view, which I quite like. But the second you pop it into drive, that will then change. So of course you have reversing camera views, but if you're going on a small parking lot speed, you can see it is now doing your wheel arches as well so it's going to show where, where your wheels are and give you some other cool views around you so you don't hit anything you also do have that really only available when you're driving which is a little bit of an interesting feature but the real thing here we're going to talk about is how this new forester drives and i have to say it is incredibly comfortable and going around town here at slow speeds it is really really comfortable it soaks up all of the bumps but it doesn't feel like it's just floating along it feels composed and i do like that kind of characteristic there another great thing about subarus is while they might not be I would say engaging vehicles anymore so much, they still have this unique Subaru feel to it that I think the Subaru Global platform has helped the brand really hone down. But um, there's this nice weight and just character to the steering. There's no feel <laughs> with, with those front tires really whatsoever, but it just has this nice, just like progressive natural feel weight to it that I, I quite like. It's not heavy. It's not overly super light that I've noticed in some Honda IKEA products. Um, it just works well. and I, it has a nice little bit of directness to you that kind of works in coordination with this chassis and suspension um, that just gives you a really pleasant plush driving experience. And I'd say plush is like the best way to kind of describe this new update on the Forester. So we're gonna pop it into Sport. We have Sport and Intelligent in our SI drive modes here. And all that really is doing is changing our throttle response. We've seen this on plenty of Subarus before. If you go for the um, Forester Sport trim, we have the Touring here, like I mentioned, you'll get a Sport Sharp. So it's gonna be a little bit even more aggressive throttle, but that's really about it there. And you can see here, going up a hill, you really get a little bit more revs when you put it into Sport mode. Um, I don't even call it mode. It's more of just a tuning for this powertrain. Another wonderful feature that Subaru continues to do in all of their Foresters is give you that incredible um, glass view around you. You will never feel cramped in a Subaru Forester. I We used to have a Forester when I was a kid and that honestly felt a little bit tiny, but you still had those giant glass windows and that kind of helped to open up the cabin a lot. And they still use that formula today on the Forester. As a driver looking ahead, you have an absolutely incredible view around you. You have big, big windows on the side of you. You also have a massive moonroof above you that unfortunately does have a power closing shade, but again, it still helps to let in a lot of light in this cabin. So you'll never really feel cramped in here. I think the best way to describe it is a light open area experience. And thankfully all these windows, as big as they are, do fold pretty much all the way down as well. Now out here on the highway, how is Subaru's latest version of their eyesight safety systems? Well, I have to say it's pretty good. It's less intrusive. It's like less sensitive than it once was. Um, the last vehicle of Subaru I drove was back in January in the all new Crosstrek Wilderness. But now we have the 2025 Forester and it's pretty much the same system we've seen on there. And what you have is on the right hand side of your steering wheel, you have all of your controls for your eyesight system. So you can change your following distance when you do activate your adaptive cruise control. 
We also have a steering assist, which we can actually turn on and off on a variety of different occasions and not just necessarily um, when you're within this system. And going into your settings over here on your infotainment screen here, there's even more um, safety systems we can kind of go through in our driver assistance. So forward collision warning, lane departure, rear vehicle detection, driver monitoring. There's a lot of different safety systems here. Keeping an eye out for you while you're driving along the road, especially with your family, pets, whatever you have hauling in your car. Forester. So let's activate our Subaru EyeSight here. So we're going to pop on our cruise control system here on our right hand button. It's going to say our steering assist is ready. You can turn that on and off if you don't want that steering assist. And all you have to do is set your speed and we are ready to go here. So it also has a lane keep assist here. And now Subaru is including these really cool um, little green dots on our almost like a heads up display style system over there to let you know that you are within the lanes, that the system is active and you are being guided along with EyeSight. Now it does not have any sort of advanced features though. Um, we don't have any sort of lane change assist. We don't have um, true hands-free functionality here yet. Um, and, you know, that's not something we're really seeing with competitors, but we're definitely getting to that point now where com some of the competition is definitely in truly surpassing Subaru in terms of technology. And out here on the highway, I would say the Forester is generally um, okay in terms of sound insulation. There's definitely a lot of road noise coming in from all of this glass. Um, I think that could easily be fixed with some noise insulating glass, but you know, Subaru's not really in that space of making luxury vehicles. They're in the space of making safe, reliable, long lasting um, family crossovers. So that's what we're seeing here um, on the highway you can definitely hear some wind and road noise from other vehicles not necessarily from this Forester um, around you so that's one thing to note there but generally I would say it's very comfortable and composed on the highway I don't feel like you know we're shaking or anything at higher speeds very very solid of a driving experience out here so really no complaints there and like I said with that amount of large glass around you making um, maneuvers changing lanes and seeing around you is very very easy of a task now also as part of this EyeSight system, and this is something we've seen on the previous Foresters as well, is Subaru's kind of facial recognition technology that they have. And it's these IR sensors and front sensors right here mounted um, above the infotainment screen. And essentially all it's doing is it's tracking your facial movements to make sure you're looking at the road at all times, especially when you're in um, EyeSight mode or when you're using those adaptive safety systems. And I'm gonna give you a best example of that. It's a very, very sensitive system. I could literally just turn this way for a quick second here and I think it's going to start beeping keep eyes and on road and hands on wheel otherwise you know I would say this 2025 Forester does what you really need it to do it's very compliant plush on the roads um, I, I have to say this suspension really is one of my favorite highlights of the Forester. It just rides along the road very well. You don't feel like you're being thrown around whatsoever, which I have actually experienced in some other um, competitors in this segment, which I have to say are just really tuned to focus on giving you crazy technology and not necessarily focusing as much on ride and body structure and body rigidity. Um, a lot of manufacturers are really starting to hone down on that and realizing that is the key to creating a really sound and cohesive driving experience. And you know, getting in and out of every single Subaru now, since every Subaru that is on sale right now is based around this exact same architecture. If you're within that Subaru family, you're gonna be very well at home here. It drives like a Subaru, steering feels like a Subaru, um, the engine feels like a Subaru, the acceleration feels like a Subaru. It's a Subaru, in and out, and it's the latest version of that Subaru ethos and family, and they've now implanted that directly right in here into the Forester, and I think it works quite well um, for what its purpose is. So definitely go check it out if you're a Forester owner. Um, you're going to be pleasantly surprised with all these nice upgrades you'll be getting in this next generation and the new layouts and new screens new technology if you are cross shopping vehicles you know I, you might not be very impressed with the new Forester. Things like um, some of the South Korean automakers are really offering some impressive technology. Um, Mazda is offering some really great driving dynamics that are, I think is class leading still, even with the CX-5 right now. So there's a lot of competitors in this segment and I think this Forester still is able to carve out that niche of being that um, safe, ultra safe, um, ultra long-term reliable option for you while also offering this latest generation of technology. I just wish they did this technology in a little bit more um, modern fashion than how they're doing this right now. Anyways, guys, thank you for joining me on yet another video here at Alcar News. And as always, stay tuned for more coming soon.